Hey, what's going on everybody? Shadow Man number nine here. Dude, I gotta make this video because I'm losing my goddamn mind. Cause I, I've you know, I'm on multiple horror groups on Facebook, I'm on multiple Texas Chainsaw Massacre groups, and people keep talking about Netflix's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which has been dubbed by I assume you could call it the majority. Everybody's been saying it's a horrible movie, it's the worst one in the franchise, but everybody keeps talking about it. It is like the most talked 2022 movie in general. Not just horror movie, not Netflix movie, it is like the most talked about movie of 2022. It's insane. People just will not let it go. And the people who hate it are so confused by what happened in the movie that they can't adequately explain what the hell is wrong with it or why they dislike it. It's nuts, man. I've been reading some of the most ridiculous, ludicrous things on these group threads, and people keep writing articles about it. This is what's crazy. is I, There was an article on this uh, horror group that I'm in, and the whole article was from Screen Rant, and it was Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022's biggest mistake was Leatherface's new backstory. Now, just so you know, this article is bullshit, because this article has nothing to do with Leatherface's backstory. It doesn't... They're trying to take the character and they're trying to take whatever changes were made to the character in this movie and call that the backstory. So it's like a character uh, essay on Netflix's Texas Chainsaw Massacre and they're trying to say, well, this is the new Leatherface because X, Y, and Z. And it's complete bullshit. It's got nothing to do with the backstory. First of all, Netflix's Texas Chainsaw Massacre doesn't deviate from the original film in any way, shape, or form. It is, by every sense of the definition, a sequel. It's just not a direct continuance following the events. Like, it just doesn't pick up right after Saturday Sally, you know, escapes from the Sawyer farm. Like, that's, I guess that's what people are pissed off about, is no movie addresses the after effects. Although this movie does, but 40 years down the line. But they're trying to take how Leatherface behaved in this movie, and just, uh, they're taking the justifications as to why he behaved in this movie, and say, okay, well, this is his new backstory now. There is no new backstory. Leatherface is still a fucking Sawyer. But as far as these sequels go, like, Texas Chainsaw 3D did the same thing. You know, they put Leatherface in this more sympathetic anti-hero role. This movie, I I've been saying it from the fucking beginning, this movie is a- it's a remake of Texas Chainsaw 3D, it's just done differently. It's the same fucking movie, just done differently. Instead of Verna Carson, we've got Mrs. M- Miss MC, or Ginny. Uh, we've got Leatherface, who's an anti-hero. You're meant to root for Leatherface in this movie, and frankly, I did. I- there's not one Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that I didn't root for Leatherface for. I don't know what the fuck people are talking about. Dude, it's insane, and- Oh, man. Take a breath, man. Hold on. Give me- just give me a minute. Jeez, I'm losing my goddamn mind, dude. Seriously, so- the thing is with this article is they try to say that they've changed the backstory to lure people in, but then they don't talk about an actual backstory. They just talk about how bad Leatherface is portrayed and how the movie, I don't know. Here, let me just, let me just read you some of this. So, uh, this again from ScreenRant.com, uh, article is Texas Chainsaw Massacre's 2022's biggest mistake was Leatherface's new backstory. Again, he has no back, he has no different back backstory. It's the same shit. Anyway, in 2022's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface has a backstory that emerges as a major mistake for the movie. Billed as a sequel to Toby Hooper's classic 1974 original, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, in which Sally Hardesty became the final girl, director David Blue Garcia's new offering has rearranged more than the original title. In the follow-up to Hooper's grisly work of art, Leatherface's chainsaw is loaded with flimsy motivation as he pursues some new town... Uh, new in-town gentrifiers and is reunited with Hardesty, who is now a Texas Ranger. Okay, so here was the first. There's the red flag right there. It's not backstory. It's motivation, and there is a huge difference between backstory and motivation. Okay, now motivation is an important part to backstory, but backstory is so much more than just the overall motivation. So this is what the article has a problem with. It's got a problem with the fact that Leatherface is a fucking anti-hero, and it's a revenge movie because his motivation to attack these people is the fact that they, you know, caused Ginny's death. He's getting revenge on these people because of Ginny. And they're upset with the fact that the relationship between Ginny and Leatherface is not clear. They're, she's not directly been outed as family. I'm telling you though, if they make more sequels, you're going to find out Ginny has a lot more to do with the Sawyer clan 
than they've let on because you don't just fucking take in Leatherface and help him hide the murder weapon in your orphanage. You don't, you don't fucking, normal people do not help psychopaths off the street without there being some sort of connection. There's got to be, but people don't think about that. People just look at the movie, see what's presented, and that's it. God forbid anybody uses their fucking imagination anymore. Not that they have the mental capacity to do so, given all the fucking hours spent on social media like TikTok just wasting away brain cells. That's the whole problem with this article, and this is what's pissed me off these last few days listening to people comment on this, because they're all confused. I've got people, I mean, I wish I could have saved this fucking uh, comment. I wish I had taken a screenshot. I didn't think I was going to make a movie on this or a video. I didn't think I was going to rant this hard about it, and I wish I had saved it. But dude, there was a girl, man. There was a girl on one of these threads, and she said it would be a hard sell, or they'd have a hard time selling, uh, selling me on... Sally working at a slaughterhouse after enduring the trauma of the events of the first movie. She didn't work at a slaughterhouse. She was a Texas Ranger. What fucking movie did you watch? Dude, no joke. Like, the only thing I could think of is that she was totally confused when uh, they introduced Sally and she's cleaning out the hog. She's cleaning out a hog on her farm, on her land. That's just, it's... She's cleaning out a hog. She's not working at a fucking slaughterhouse. Did you not watch the movie? I mean, it's blatantly obvious. The guy in the beginning of the movie, the first 15 minutes of the movie, it's revealed she became a Texas Ranger. She never worked at a slaughterhouse. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if anybody could sell you on fucking anything. You don't seem to have the fucking mental capacity to be sold on anything. I, I mean, uh, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Yeah, but I wasn't. Am I wrong? Has the whole world gone crazy? Guys, come on. She worked at a slaughterhouse. Really? And then you got people, oh my god, throw the fucking orphanage in there, and people start losing their minds. Another thing I've been seeing is people just uh, are so confused about the whole fucking orphanage. Like, um, I'll start reading some comments here in a minute, but just to kind of paraphrase, just to kind of give you a general overview of what's been going on, is people have been saying the orphanage thing doesn't make sense because he's an adult. He doesn't belong in an orphanage. Why would an orphanage take in a grown man? He can't, you can't sneak him by the system they would find out and then be like, you can't have a grown man in an orphanage. Like, this is what people fucking think, okay? This is what I've been reading for the last week is all these stupid comments. Oh, Leatherface is an adult. He was an adult at the end of at the end of uh, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He wasn't a kid, so why did he grow up in the orphanage? He didn't fucking grow up in the orphanage. Oh my God. He fucking went into hiding and hid at the orphanage. First of all, you don't have to be a child to live at a fucking orphanage. Miss, oh, what the fuck's her name? Ginny, we're just gonna call it Ginny. Ginny owned the fucking orphanage, but the orphanage was also her house. It housed young children, but it was also her house. She could take in or have people live with her so long as she had the adequate room for them. But like, if anybody had asked, she could have definitely come up with something. You know what I'm saying? You know, she could have passed him off as her own fucking family. She could have passed him off as a caretaker, as an employee. There's so many things that could have happened. And everybody's like, oh, he grew up in an orphanage? No, that's not what happened in the first movie. And how did the chainsaw get there? You want to know how the fucking chainsaw got there? Because he got to the orphanage and they took the fucking chainsaw and hid it in the wall. Do you know why they hid it in the wall? Because it's really hard for police to convict you of murder without tying you to the murder weapon that they can't fucking find. I'm seriously losing my fucking shit. Like it just reading every single one of these comments and they're just it's the same comment over and over There's so many people who are this fucking brain dead and just can't use their imagination to fill in the holes There used to be a time where the movie would only give us what we needed to and then we used our imagination to fill it in Now you've got to be fucking spoon-fed everything because they don't have the fucking mental capacity from looking at TikTok all day To figure out how the fucking movie works. Come on, dude. So Let's get back into this article real quick, because this is this is some good shit. So, in 2022, or in the 2022 film, Leatherface, free from consequence for almost 50 years, because he went into hiding, and they couldn't find him, because he wore a mask, and it's extremely hard to find somebody when you don't know what they look like. He's down tools and retired to live out his senior years in an orphanage in the abandoned ghost town of Harlow. Like the diminishing returns of the Chainsaw Legacy, the fact that he is the only orphan there indicates that the business is in decline. He's not an orphan. Finn. Oh my god, dude, why? They're, they're, they're trying to justify him being in an orphanage. and uh, He can't be in an orphanage if he's not an orphan. He can't be an orphan if he's not in an orphanage. What? D does anybody understand what I'm saying? Like, does this piss anybody else off? It's like, I, 
I could have a fucking mental breakdown, dude, seriously. The death of Leatherface's sole protector, his guardian mother figure, Ginny, from a stress-induced heart attack following the failure of some investors to properly check their proprietary paperwork turns out to be the catalyst for him retrieving this chainsaw and taking her face as his own. Yes, it is a revenge film. It is a revenge film through and through. There was, there was like no misunderstandings about it. If the intention of Texas Chainsaw Massacre is to comment on the modern world by having Leatherface annihilate it, then that would be fair enough. Instead, it attempts to interject or inject poignancy into the central characters, the Weepy Sisters, Melody and Lila. First of all, it only injects poignancy into fucking Melody, because Melody was fucking trash. She was an absolute bitch and annoying the entire fucking movie, but I believed her sincerity regarding the situation that was at hand. She felt, I mean, I totally felt the flip. It wasn't like it was forced. I don't think it was completely out of character for Melody to suddenly flip and feel bad. I mean, she fucking watched a woman die and watched this this poor guy like lose the only person that he's had for the last couple years. So, I mean, the flip seemed natural. Melody played it off very well. Lila was nothing like Melody. Lila's not like any... She's not like her sister's friend. So Lila was already an innocent character and probably the better one out of the bunch. So you didn't have to inject anything into fucking her because she felt... I mean, she she was the victim of a school shooting. She had survivor's guilt. There was already poignancy in her fucking character. Continuing on with the article, whom Leatherface is pursuing and worse Leatherface himself. It's not worse because he's always been a sympathetic character. He's been sympathetic since the first fucking movie. The scene when Drayton goes into the kitchen and starts beating his ass just because he wrecked the door. Like, I mean, you feel for Leatherface. He's in an, an abusive domestic situation and he's been raised wrong. You can't help but there you can't help but feel something for Leatherface. He's a tragic character. Leatherface has emerged in multiple Chainsaw sequels, spin-offs, and different timelines with a variety of inclinations. Due to this film being a direct sequel to the original, maintaining the motive, uh, motiveless horror of Leatherface's indiscriminate killing should have taken precedent. Instead, he is given a feeble impulse to seek revenge for his guardian's death. Why is it feeble? The Sawyers were all about family. Family was everything to the Sawyers. That's everything that fucking Leatherface knew. He only knew family. His whole reason and justification for doing what he did was for family. And if Ginny was his family, then what happens when Leatherface loses his family? That's what this movie is. What the fuck happens when Leatherface, when there's no one to help Leatherface control Leatherface, what does he do? He becomes a fucking ruthless brute. That's what happens. That's what this movie is. That's why I love it. Because there's no chains on Leatherface. There's no one to keep him in check. He just does. He does what he feels. And it's totally justified. Like, it's not like they fucking forced any of this into the movie. It's all there and it makes sense. And it's a nice short movie too, which, although I would have liked a, a longer movie, I like that it was nice and short, sweet, to the point. Because it didn't have too much um, room for error. It didn't leave a lot of room for error. It packed it nice and tight said what it needed to, showed us what it wanted to, and that was it. In Toby Hooper's 1974 film, the themes were straightforward. Evil existed in unchecked corners of isolated human habitation, while remoteness from an assortment of DNA was breeding ground for reckless cruelty. What? Are you talking about inbreds? They never, they never confirmed that they were inbreds. Rednecks, maybe, but never inbreds. I wish people would stop talking about the first movie if they don't fucking fully understand what they're talking about. Leatherface was subservient to the elder members of his family. That's correct, I just said that. His chainsaw was his pet, who, like a rambunctious dog, was the only thing to that seemed to give him joy. Meanwhile, the youngsters who found themselves trapped in his lair did not represent the audience's point of view. They too were strangers, albeit ordinary ones, who, bar one, died in quick succession. That's all the first movie was. And see, that's my other point too. Everybody keeps talking about how bad the story was. The first movie doesn't have that, doesn't really have that big of a story either. I had one guy who was talking to me, arguing back and forth that this movie was a slap in the face because the first movie was monumentally just better storytelling. But again, I have to interject, what story? Five people on a fucking road trip through Texas to, to make sure that uh, Sally and Franklin's family graves weren't disturbed in a string of grave robbings. And then they wander onto, a Sawyer, onto the Sawyer's cannibalistic farmhouse where they are one by one murdered except for Sally who's the sole survivor. That's it. That's, that's the fucking simplest storyline in a movie ever. So, yeah, that's really all it was. It was a fucking... 
<laughs> it was really just them going to die, and then one just happened to escape. Really, the whole point of Texas Chainsaw Massacre was, like they said, it was it was the fact that there was uh, evil that existed in unchecked corners of isolated human habitation. While, well, no, not the DNA part. Fuck that. Um, the isolated human habitation. Uh, the fact that the Sawyers were they were in reality they were like right they were all around us they worked at the gas station where people went to go get gas buy barbecue they were there everyday life existed with the sawyers involved but we didn't know what was happening behind their closed doors that's the whole point to texas chainsaw massacre you don't know what's going on in somebody else's home you don't know what they're involved in outside of everyday life in their own private life that's texas chainsaw massacre now this movie oh wait a minute what are they saying by contrast texas chainsaw massacre's cast of characters have painful pasts and ambitious futures, and a leather face with a chainsaw to grind as vindiction for the death of Ginny, a woman whose relationship to him isn't clearly explained because you're not letting them, you're not giving them the chance to build upon it. Let them make a few more movies and fully convey the story, because it, it seems to me like there's a grander story to be told, especially since he went back to the fucking Sawyer home. The Sawyer home still exists. It's still there. So it could be like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 narration. Lawmen mounted a month-long manhunt but could not locate the macabre farmhouse. You know? We, we don't know what's going on now that the Sawyer house is there and he's going back there. We don't know who's there. there could, they could be playing on the whole trope that Toby Hooper had written years ago, the, the Beyond the Valley of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which if you don't know the story, Toby Hooper had the idea for a sequel where the entire fucking town was made up of Sawyers, or they, they all had some kind of connection to the Sawyer clan. It was, it was just this huge town of one family, which Michael Bay's, um, which the comics, the comic book sequel to Michael Bay's Texas Chainsaw Massacre actually took. They took that storyline and used it for the storyline for the comics. If you know the comics I'm talking about, um, everybody in that town, when the four FBI guys came there to investigate, they ran into nothing but Hewitts. Because that, and that's what they did. They took that storyline. So we don't know what's going on. We don't know who in Harlow was in on it. We don't know if Ginny had something to do with it. Maybe she was the love interest of Drayton. We don't know. We don't know because they haven't explained. The first movie was Leatherface. It was all about Leatherface. They are building up to it. When Sally confronted... Wait. When finally confronted with Sally Hardesty and her vengeful monologue, his general ignorance for her identity is unintentionally funny. Yeah, but you're assuming he doesn't know who she is? He might know who she is and doesn't give a fuck. Because right now, he's worried about the bitches that killed Ginny. I mean, you just, you don't know, you don't know what they're going for. You don't, herein lies one of the, me, uh, one of many of the film's problems. The hint of a motive in Leatherface's terrorist actions is immediately contradicted, contradicted by his can-do idiocracy, or idiocy. Despite the overall failure of the film, at times it's hard not to side with Leatherface. For one, his Herculean strength is impressive for a man at his age. Because again, if he walked around in a fucking walker or drove around in a Tom Cruise hover around, it wouldn't be much of a fucking movie. Okay, again, imagination's gotta come into play at some point when you watch these movies. You just gotta take what they give you and roll with it, okay? He's his kill them all policy seems like a more efficient plan than his adversaries. Melody and Dante buying up Harlow and auctioning it off to nondescript social media hustlers. I guarantee you though, if they didn't fuck with Ginny, it would have been fine. That's the thing. They could have actually gone through Harlow and did what they wanted to, and there probably wouldn't have been a problem until you fucked with either Leatherface or Ginny, and that's what you don't understand. You. A lot of these people have this idea that Leatherface sees a person, thinks food, we gotta kill him, we gotta eat him. Like, that's not, that's not how that works. He doesn't have to be a cannibal, that's just what the family did back then to survive, that's what they were doing, and he went along with it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre supplements Leatherface's carte blanche killing spree with an unconvincing history that succeeds ultimately in reminding its audience to seek out the far better Masks and Meat Hooks original. Dude, this whole article did nothing to pinpoint the fucking history or change in backstory. It literally just talked about why the movie was awful because of his motives. That's all it was. This is a bullshit article and people who have been jumping on it with all of their fucking comments about why the movie doesn't make sense. Again, it's just, it's just a fucking bad batch of stupidity.